Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today let's make another flannel shirt. I went ahead and prepped the shirt like normal and I don't have it turned inside out, but I did go ahead and button it completely up. I did unbutton the collar though and so hopefully that will make it a little bit easier to tie. I'm going to make this shirt a side fan fold and then I'm going to incline ice dye it. So the area between the armpit and the hem of the shirt is where I'm going to put the fan fold. I don't want to put it just exactly in the middle, I want it a little bit above the middle. So I found the middle of this area and then made a mark just a bit above that where I'd like the center of my fan fold to be. Then using a piece of kite string and a washable marker, I drew an arc on the side of my shirt. Now I'm going to fan fold this line and tie it with some kite string. The last flannel shirt that I posted a video for was a ladies flannel shirt that I got at Walmart. So I decided to go over into the men's section and see if they had some flannels. And that's where I found this shirt. But this shirt is not a 100% cotton flannel like the ladies style was. Instead, this one is 55% cotton and 45% viscose. If you're wondering what that is, it is a semi-synthetic fabric. And it's supposed to be kind of like rayon. So I'm hoping that it dyes as well as rayon does because rayon dyes really nicely. A common question that I get asked is what to do with long sleeves whenever I'm doing a design that has long sleeves. For the most part, I try to work the sleeves into the design if at all possible. Like with this shirt, when I got to the first sleeve, I just tried to fan fold it into the rest of the shirt. So most of the time I just try to incorporate the design on the sleeve down into the rest of the shirt. Sometimes it's fun to do a totally different design on the sleeves though. I've seen people tie mandalas on the sleeves, um, hearts, various different designs to kind of set the sleeves apart from the rest of the design. So it just kind of depends on the look that you're going for on the shirt. Whether or not you want to just make the sleeves part of the design or whether you want to set them apart and make them something unique in and of themselves. So my fan folds are a little bit messy on this shirt because the shirt is so thick and between the pockets which are like double thickness and the collar which is really awkward and the rest of the shirt, the fan folds are pretty messy. When I get to this very last sleeve, I'm going to try to fan fold it the way I was fan folding the rest of the shirt. But to make it a little bit shorter, I'm going to fold it in on itself a couple of times. This design is already getting to be pretty long and my vinyl guttering that I incline ice dye in is only about four feet long. 
I do have some longer six foot sections and that's actually what I ended up having to use on this shirt. So to incline the shirt, I've gone ahead and put one end down inside of a plastic container and I've left the other end hanging over the edge. Then so that the shirt doesn't slide all the way down, I took a dye bottle that I filled with just plain water and placed it in the very end of the vinyl guttering. I want to use some dark reds on the shirt, but I'm a little bit concerned since the colors that I'm using are pretty dark that they're going to overtake the black in the shirt and I don't want that. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the ice on the shirt and add the dye on top of the ice. That'll kind of mute my colors just a little bit. They won't be quite as intense. As thick as this shirt is, there's not a lot of space to add ice on top, but as I'm adding the ice, I'm pressing it down into the shirt. I'm starting at the very top of the shirt and the area that I initially fan folded with Bordeaux from Pro Chemical and Dye. I'm sorry, but I didn't realize when I was filming this that the guttering was so long that it went outside the view of my camera. So this portion of the shirt got cut off from the recording. Then the next color I'm gonna use is Rose Wine from Pro Chemical and Dye. And the final color is Black Cherry from Dharma Trading Company. Now I'm going to add a little sprinkle of soda ash over the top of the dye just to make sure that I have plenty in my shirt after all of this ice melts. And I'm gonna set the shirt aside and allow the ice to melt. So after this first layer of ice melted, as you can see, the dye started coming through to the backside, but it's not real dark. So I've decided to go ahead and turn the shirt over and apply dye to the backside as well. I'm gonna add some more ice and I'm gonna add the same dye colors in the same pattern that I did on the front side. I'm not gonna add quite as much dye though the second time, just a very light layer of dye.
Then I'm going to add a little bit more soda ash over the top and set the shirt aside and allow this second layer of ice to melt. After this layer of ice melted, I just left the shirt alone and I allowed it to process for about 48 hours before I rinsed it. I rinsed the shirt like normal by taking it to my utility sink and rinsing it in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. After rinsing for a while, I went ahead and untied the shirt and warmed the water up to hot to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. When the water was almost clear, I went ahead and put the shirt into my washing machine along with a little bit of Dharma's textile detergent and washed it using a hot water cycle. Then after the shirt was washed and dried, this is what it looks like. So what do you guys think about the shirt? I'm not entirely sure how I feel about it. I mean, I love the colors, but there's not a lot of definition between the three different colors that I used on the shirt. I was at least expecting to see maybe the lighter color that I used in the middle, the rose wine, I was expecting to see it stand out a little bit. And it kind of does in the sense that the color splits in the rose wine are part of what you see right in that middle portion of the shirt. The green and some of the yellow colors, those both came out of the rose wine. But for the most part, you can't see a huge difference between the three colors in the shirt. And the design in the shirt doesn't show very well. I know part of that is due to the fact that the shirt is so thick and the fan folds were a little messy and that I put the dye over the top of the ice instead of the other way around with putting the dye under the ice. But I still expected to see a little bit more of the design and a little bit more color difference between the three colors that I used. Overall though, I do like the shirt and I do think that the viscose dyed really well. For the most part, almost every area of the shirt is saturated with dye. Some of the areas show the color splits and the dye is kind of lighter in those areas, but the shirt definitely accepted dye all throughout the shirt. I do think it's a unique and interesting shirt though, and I think it would look really good this fall and winter to pair it with like a pair of black leggings and some boots, maybe some gold jewelry. I think that would look really cute. I bought a few more of these flannel shirts like this, so I'm going to try some different techniques on them and see how they work with maybe some liquid dye. I'm not sure that this technique is the right one for this shirt. So I'm going to experiment with them just a little bit more. But drop me a comment down below and let me know what you think. And if you've ever tie dyed flannel, let me know what your experience was and if there's a particular method that works better for flannel. I would also appreciate it if you'd like my video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.